Hello everyone, welcome to what if Naruto had solo leveling powers in Konoha part 1. Before we start please go support Kira Uzumaki 1 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made. There will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Naruto is a male in this story. Prologue. The fateful day, that day where the event would have great consequences in the elemental nations. The return of a sovereign, the king of sovereigns, with an infinite army behind him, faithful and without question. The return of the Sovereign of Shadows. Hello, I come to clarify from here that there are certain points that you should take into account. 1. Naruto is older than his original generation. 2. Naruto does not have the Kai Ubi, I consider that the power of the Sovereign would conflict with the power of Kurama. 3. Kishina is alive, but Minato is not. 4. There will be deaths that I will consider, I will not say who I suspect you already know. 5. I try to make the stories intertwine with each other and that they have been adapted to the time of Naruto. I ask for patience. 6. I am new to this topic, I will accept any advice or constructive criticism. 7. The ages, clearly, will be modified. Mainly Minato and Kishina. 8. You must read the manhwa or the novel to understand certain details. Chapter 1. The day is October 10, everyone in Konoha intensely hates this day. A few hours ago the great Kaiubi no Yoko destroyed the village, thousands of lives, both shinobi and civilians died in that immense destruction. The Yundame Hokage, Namakiz Minato, sacrificed his life to protect the village. I seal the Biju in his stomach, the Grim Reaper, the Shinigami, I claim his soul. Minato's wife, Yuzumaki Kishina, fainted after the Biju was extracted, so she was unable to help her husband. Her newborn daughter, Yuzumaki Hikari, was in the care of her older brother, Yuzumaki Naruto. The Hokage's wife, Yuzumaki Kishina, is currently in a coma, summarizes a doctor. When will she wake up? Asks the old Hokage. I don't know, you know. Twelve-year-old Naruto looked with sad eyes at his mother, in his arms was his little sister. He had lost many things that day, his father and his mother, different reasons, but he lost them both. He felt lost, just a week ago he graduated from the ninja academy. Being just a genin he helped evacuate the civilians, but he wished he could have helped more. Naruto, the Hokage calls. Come, I want us to talk. Following the Hokage's order, he stood up from his chair and looked at his mother one last time. Walking behind the major, the village was unrecognizable, civilians and shinobi crying next to a body. Friends, brothers, partners, parents and children were lost in this great catastrophe. He pressed the small body against his chest, they arrived at the Hokage's tower, which thanks to a miracle remained standing. People ran from one side to the other to help people. In a few minutes, they arrived at the office. Tsuritobi sat in the chair, he allowed himself to relax for a second, the greatest danger had passed. His old bones protested a little at all the movement of the night. Naruto, you're a genin, so you can't be in charge of your sister, he explained softly. I won't give her to anyone, she is the only family I have left and I will protect her, he growls, dissatisfied with the explanation. You're still 12 years old, Naruto, you're not old enough or mature enough to raise your sister, he emphasizes tiredly. Please, Grandpa, don't take her away from me, she's the only thing I have left, he says, his voice broken and he tried to cry. The old man watches as Naruto's arms close protectively around the baby. He lets out a sigh and contains the smile that he wanted to show before the spirit of his grandson, it was not good to try to reason with an Yuzumaki if he is family. I propose a deal to you, Naruto, the old man spoke seriously. A deal? He asks confused. Yes, you see, if you get through it without any problems you will have permanent custody of your sister, until your mother wakes up from her coma, he explains. What is it? The Yuzumaki questions seriously. If you manage to take care of your sister, while carrying out missions, for three months and without asking for help, you will have custody of your sister he proposes. I will do it, you'll see the blonde exclaims happily. I'll be waiting for the deal to finish, good luck, Naruto, Sirotobi said. An Anbu entered, requesting his presence in front of the shinobi and civil council. Naruto bows to both senior people and leaves. As he walks, he can't help but feel a little excited and desperate about everything, but the soft gurgling of his little sister slowly calms him down. He would do anything to protect her from her. Episode 2. Two months later the village was slowly being rebuilt, thanks to the alliances that Kanoha had there received help. Naruto had a stressful few months, he really admired his parents, he had to ask some older ladies for advice on taking care of a baby. Every day they went to visit his mother, he slowly taught his sister the world and who his parents were. In a few days he had to return to duty, and it generated waves of anxiety for Naruto, he didn't know anyone to take care of his sister. While he thought about possible people, he gave the bottle to his sister. After helping him with air on her chest, gently hitting her back to make her burp, he lays her down in her crib. After softly singing a lullaby and stroking her head, Hikari fell asleep. She decides to eat some instant ramen, she doesn't have enough energy to cook something nutritious. 
if she had a technique to create a solid clone, but the Bushin no Jutsu were images. Unable to find any answers on his own, he decides to turn to one person, his grandfather Saratobi, the Hokage. He takes one last look at his sister as he leaves the small apartment he got from his godfather Jiraiya. He walks through the streets, the people were gloomy, but he tried to overcome the tragedy. He arrives at the red building and enters, the secretary tells him that the Hokage was free so he could enter. The secretary really silently admired Naruto, because he was so young and took care of his little sister, it was evident in his disastrous appearance, which made his best efforts. Naruto wanting to return quickly to the apartment looks at the clock on the wall, he had already calculated the time when his sister wakes up asking for attention. He knocks on the door and enters after receiving the pass. The Sandane was in a fierce fight, with an immortal enemy since time immemorial, the dreaded paperwork. Saratobi smiled sinisterly at Naruto, as he had rescued him from paperwork for a few minutes. What do you need Naruto? He asks extremely cheerfully. Grandpa, you have a technique to create a solid clone he questions. Yes, but tell me the reason why you need it look into the blue eyes. As you know, I will return to the service in a week, and since we made the bet of not asking for help, I need a technique that allows me to take care of my little sister from afar, he explains sincerely. And at no time did we agree that I could not ask for help in techniques related to caring for my sister. Smart boy, you caught me the old man says happily. The old man gets up to walk to a shelf of books, books with numbers. He pulls out a purple capped wand, opens almost to the end of the object, and applies some chakra to the seal. With a soft explosion and smoke, a scroll appears. Here it is. Be careful how you use it, it is a kin technique, so the chakra expenditure is greater throw the scroll at Naruto. Thank you, grandpa, he thanks. But the bow, he leaves the room and sweats a little when he hears a wail from inside the office. He runs in a hurry to get to the apartment, as he passes through the threshold he hears the cry of his sister. Letting out a sigh of relief at arriving in time, Hikari's crying increased even though Naruto was present, she tried to test if it was hunger or the dirty diaper. She despairs at not fully understanding her sister's crying, when she decides to investigate one of the books that an old woman lent her. Sometimes it was the cry that they were sick, we had to check the baby's temperature, if it wasn't fever, it was gas. Babies needed help to release gas in the first months of life or up to a year, which is when they begin to walk. Fortunately it was the gases, so after performing the procedure the crying finally calmed down, and then the apartment was filled with gurgling and clumsy laughter. Well Hikari, do you want to help me train, Naruto proposes. The baby didn't understand what her brother was telling her, so she just extended her hands and gurgled happily, lifting her from her crib and allowing her to touch Naruto's face who walked a few steps to get to the kitchen dining room, and she left her lying on the floor for a moment to move the table away and make room, luckily the wooden floor was covered with a warm rug. Naruto lies face down on the floor, while his little sister moves her arms happily. She opens the parchment and begins to look over it, there are images with the proper hand postures, more warnings and benefits of the technique, so she begins to read. Page Bushin no Jutsu. It is a kinjutsu in which they are created from real bodies with an equivalent amount of chakra in each one, all the created bodies depend on the real one, so that if its mind suffers any disorder such as jinjutsu or loss of consciousness, the clones fall apart or may suffer the same trauma. To perform this technique you need to spend a considerable amount of chakra, and you have to be able to distribute it equally among all the replicas. Typically around four copies maximum are created. Variant, Haju Cage Bushin no Jutsu. As previously explained, clones are created through a certain amount of evenly distributed chakra. In this section more than four copies are created, so the amount of chakra is greater. Warning. Do not use this technique if your chakra is lower than a Li Chunin or Lo Jounin. Preferably a Jounin. Naruto wasn't very interested in the technique itself, so he only read the basics. Luckily he had chakra at the level of the Hokage, Hikari protested for a moment for attention, seeing the smiling face of his brother, she stretched out his chubby arms. Naruto picks her up, as she sits, and holds her up. Hikari tugs at his brother's blonde locks, who grimaces and receives a small laugh. Getting more hair pulling, which really has no force, he proceeds to play and show her a book with pictures of animals. An hour later Hikari fell asleep, after placing her in the crib Naruto proceeded to train the cage Bushin. Shaping chakra like the normal Bushin, he can feel a small part of his reserves being taken, he closes his eyes for a moment, thanking his sensei for teaching him chakra control. Indeed a loud poof sounds, when he looks he finds seven clones. He jumps up for a moment to celebrate his achievement, but quickly shuts up so as not to wake his sister. Well, now we see how she fares with a clone, the others disappear, she orders. Understood say six clones. Just as when they were summoned they disappear in smoke, he looks intently at the leftover clone in the room. He goes around the body and touches his shoulder, checking that he was solid like a normal person, nod satisfied and orders him to disappear. Lying down on the couch, he closes the scroll and places it on the floor. 
In these small hours of silence he would take the opportunity to rest. Chapter 3. Eleven years later, in an apartment, a 24-year-old blonde woke up with a long yawn. Scratching his stomach he comes to the kitchen, he begins to open the curtains to let the sun in, it was 6.30 in the morning, and the sun was on the horizon. The blonde walks to the bathroom to get into the shower and wake up completely, while in another room the alarm starts ringing to wake up a red-haired girl. The girl wakes up slowly to stare at the wall with a trickle of saliva on her cheek. The blonde dresses in his shinobi clothes, black gown and pants with bandages on the ankles, a white t-shirt with a small kanji for will in the heart, and a hooded jacket. Once ready he goes out into the hallway to knock on the front door. Bakari, react, the blonde says. Yeah. Bakari, get up or you won't have breakfast, the blonde threatens. I'm coming Naruto. Naruto walks to the kitchen to prepare breakfast and lunch for his sister. He sits down for a moment to open the scroll that contained the day's mission. After the first knock on the door, Hikari lays her head on the pillow, hoping to sleep for a few more minutes. However, her brother knows her so he threatens her with what she loves most, food. Obviously feeling threatened by the food, Hikari prepares to go to the bathroom and do her daily routine. She dresses in a tight burgundy colored t-shirt, it had a turtleneck and bare shoulders, she placed mesh fabric on her legs and black pants on top. She left her room to find her older brother serving breakfast, next to her plate or lunch for the academy. Naruto grabs the scroll to finish reading it, it was a joint mission with Suna Shinobus. Being the only one from Konoha, the mission was simple, eliminate a ninja from the bingo book, Suna asked Konoha for help to capture his traitor. Since there were currently no other Jounin, they gave her the B-rank mission. So she would be away for a few days, her sister finished eating, and she went to prepare her things for the ninja academy. Bakari, I'm going on a mission for a few days. Do you need me to leave a clone? She she questions at the end. Don't worry, I'll be fine, focus on the mission, she easily dismisses. The conversation dies there for a few minutes, Naruto picks up his ninja weapons and everything he needs for the mission. Both brothers walk out the door together. Take care Hikari. Don't get into trouble and don't paint the faces of the Hokages, if I find out what you did, you will be punished asks the oldest. When have I gotten into trouble? Asks the youngest. I must tell you one by one, she questions with a smile. No, thank you, it's fine, she asks, Hikari and hugs her brother to say goodbye to her. Just take care of yourself and stay safe, he caresses her sister's back. That's what I should say, anyway, when I go out I'll visit mom she separates from her brother. Both brothers say goodbye and leave in opposite directions. Hikari greets the villagers in the busy streets, shinobi jumped from the roofs or walked, the shops were open, and the young people of the academy left to go to the building. Hikari a girl with pink hair approaches. Sakura, hello, I was on my way to look for you, she greets with a big smile. You don't have to worry anymore, I've decided to wake up earlier, she comments. It must be due to a certain emotive she questions jokingly. Sasuke is not an emo, and she prattles on about his great platonic love. Naruto leaves through the gates of the village, after greeting his companions, Kitetsu and Izumo, he begins to run through the trees to reach the meeting point. He had to meet at the border between Hai no Kuni and Keis no Kuni, his companions would arrive in two days at the border with only one of them. Indeed, after a day of travel with intervals of rest and food, he had to wait for his mission companions. His classmates, who are nine, were not very interesting, and they did not decide to start a relationship either. Although they seemed upset to know that only one shinobi from Kanoha was attending, Naruto tried to explain the situation so that there were no misunderstandings, luckily they understood. The team had a healer, so in case of injuries they had to go to her, a Jounin was the leader of the operation. Obtained target information near Tanigakur. After a five-hour journey in ten silence, they arrived at Tanigakur. It was a quiet place so it was to be expected that a trader would run to these lands, Naruto thought that it was very easy to predict, if he were a trader, he would hide in his own village, cut off those types of thoughts, because he would never betray the village of his father, mother and sister. Making a simple henge to be simple citizens. They found the target in the middle of a restaurant, with many people around. So they decided to appear in a group of three, a group of four, a group of two and one alone, in an interval of 15 minutes. They were immersed in the performance of friends or a couple, in the case of two. Naruto had to act as the healer's partner. When their target seemed ready to leave the group of three came out first, they took their time to appear civilian. We should wait until night, Naruto commented. Uh, do you think? Asks the healer. Yes, they say the stars look beautiful on the hill, she answers. The target was suspicious of them for a moment, but upon listening to the conversation he realized that they were a couple in love. He moved silently without knowing that Naruto suggested a move. Waiting for 10 minutes the couple moved to meet their companions. They disappeared without attracting the attention of civilians, they followed their objective. I spent time at the fair that was held there, sometimes the group casually appeared in front of the lens. They needed good coverage. Night fell and the bars lit up, they waited until late into the night. 
His target left the premises completely drunk, forgetting that he was a traitor. A shinobi of the team places a Jinjutsu, thanks to the alcohol in the target system he did not perceive anything. They quickly moved to kill their target, who was apparently acting. Odd, they almost had me with their facade the Suna traitor moans piteously. Yamamoto Ryu, former shinobi of Suna, sentenced to persecution and death the leader speaks. The shinobi snorts in annoyance, everyone prepared for a fight. Naruto and his companions set out to kill their target, since he was hardly an elite shinin. However, they later realized that a large seal was drawn on the ground. If I die tonight, they will die with me, he says, laughing at the misfortune of his pursuers. Everyone feels like they are being pulled by a strong pressure, the stomach twisting to the point of thinking that the organs were rearranged in places they shouldn't. They fall heavily against the stone floor, when they stand up the room lights up. Some columns that reach the ceiling and some tree roots coming out from above, as if they were in a basement. They won't be able to get out of here anymore, the traitor boasts. You won't get out of here either, says the healer. I don't mind dying knowing that I'm taking nine down into hell with me. Naruto lets out a sigh, he was prepared to go out and kill his target. However, a sound of a wild beast echoes throughout the place, from the unlit parts. Some strange creatures began to advance towards the shinobi. I present to you the best jutsu created by anyone, welcome to the dungeon, the traitor speaks, while he prepares his weapons. Chapter 4 Akari looked with satisfaction at the lunch that her older brother prepared for her. She was with her friend Hinata sitting on a bench at the academy. Sakura had gotten lost in harassing Sasuke, and Hikari got tired of trying to separate her from her. Your lunch is always very delicious, Hinata comments shyly. My brother is the best, she praises happily. That's what Hikari thought, Naruto's brother was great. Well, he took care of her and taught her everything he knew about her since she was 13 years old, an incredible feat. Naruto always had time to listen to her and advise her, despite arriving tired on her missions. She always left a clone when he left, and it rarely disappeared, so he never felt abandoned. Naruto played the role of mother, father and older brother, so Hikari greatly admired her brother. The day I'm going to see my mother, Hikari comments. Shall I accompany you? Hinata asks. Yes please. I still don't dare to go alone she responds, embarrassed. Whenever she went alone she felt that her mother would wake up and not recognize her. It was a routine that she had with her brother. Every time he went away on a long mission, she would visit her place. Her mother. When she returned, the two of them went to stay a few hours at the hospital, Naruto told her the memories she had of her mother. Telling him how excited she was for him to be born, the fights between her parents, which were ridiculous, how they prepared a room along with her toys. So the atmosphere was warm and fun, they also told her mother about the day or week they had, they even got to fight ridiculously. The bell rang for them to go back to class, which for Hikari's excess of energy, made it impossible to sit still, but she tries her best not to cause problems for her brother. Her classmates were a special generation, from what the teachers commented. They are right, the heirs of important clans attended this class. The Inuzukas, the Aburams, the Hayuga, the Achiha, the Yamanaka, the Nara, the Akamichi and the Uzumaki. In short, they were treated like the new golden generation. The day passed calmly, with normal classes, some Hikari calls for attention, murderous screams of emo fangirls. Yes, nothing strange, the classes ended well, Hikari felt her soul escaping through her mouth, her friend Hinata snorted, amused by the antics of her best friend. It was a day without anything strange. Come on, we have to go to the hospital, she gently hits the Ritid's back. Sakura had gone with Achiha Sasuke's group of fangirls, so he forgot about her, remembering that her brother told her not to be as close as she is with Hinata. Hinata and she walk through the streets of the village, it would soon be dark, and there were only a few minutes left to visit the hospital. When the nurses arrive, they greet the girls. They arrive at Kishina's private room. Upon entering, they find a beautiful woman, but her beauty slowly deteriorates due to her coma. Her limbs and face showed her bones, her sickly skin, and her hair, which was once a vibrant red, brittle and dark. Hikari lets out a sigh and takes her mother's hand, kissing the back of it, feeling the cold skin. Hello mom, I'm Hikari, I came with Hinata. You know, I'm a little scared to come alone, but it's not your fault, it's the sad air of the hospital, she says. Hello Mrs. Kashina, Hinata greets. Naruto has gone on a mission for a few days, it's the first day and I already miss him. Don't worry, he will be fine, he is strong and one of the best jounin, she says. Hinata was silent most of the time, watching as her friend spoke to her comatose mother. Before meeting her she thought she was miserable, but upon meeting Hikari, she tried to be better every day. For herself and her friend. She certainly never met Hikari's brother, but she really admired him, she raised an excellent girl. She contributed a little to her friend's silent conversation, they laughed a couple of times. A few minutes later, a nurse arrived and asked them to leave. Mom, I have to go now, I'll visit you with Naruto soon, so you won't feel alone, she greets. Goodbye, Lady Kashina, said the Hayuga. 
The girl was separate at the exit of the hospital, Hikari lived nearby, so she arrived in a short time. The house was silent, it was not the first time that she was left completely alone, including being without a clone, walking half-heartedly and heating water. The only advantage she would have these days was that she could eat as much ramen as she wanted, and her brother wouldn't scold her. The healer was healing the wound on Naruto's back, who upon seeing the last monsters, decided to kill the traitor Shinobi, who was focused on his enemy. The only thing he didn't take into account was the monster. The entire team had survived, it was lucky that there was a healer, because they were wounded several times until she found a pattern in the monsters. The adrenaline had gone down, they would have to figure out how to get out of this place. There, your wound is completely healed, the girl said with a smile. Thank you for healing me, thanks the blonde. Whoever is hurt comes, we don't know what can happen, the healer says to the others. No one was hurt except Naruto, they stopped for a moment when they saw that there were no more monsters. Hey there seems to be an entrance here as soon a ninja warns. Everyone entered the path, it seemed as if they had knocked down a wall and discovered that passage. They arrived at some large gates, they seemed heavy. The leader of the group opened the gates without problems. It was a large chamber, a giant statue sitting on a lathe, several statues of knights standing still, others had instruments. Under an arch, an angel with a robe covering his head held a stone tablet. They investigated for the moment, there was no mechanism or clue to get out of there. The leader approached the angel and began to read aloud. The healer pulled Naruto's arm. Commandments of the Cardinan Temple. What's happening? You do not feel good? Naruto asks. Oh over there the blonde followed the healer's fingers to the statue of God. She was pointing at his face. Not seeing any difference in her face from the first time she saw him, Naruto bowed his head. H her eyes the statue's eyes were looking at us, he says with a trembling voice. That? Naruto asks stunned. No matter how hard he looked, the result was the same. The statue was still, without moving. You must have imagined it, Naruto says. But his words fell on deaf ears. Casting her gaze to the ground, the healer clung to his arms and trembled. Soon a feeling of dread took over the Uzumaki. The crackling sound of the torch fires suddenly fell silent, Naruto began to question why the sound disappeared. First commandment, worship the Lord. Second, praise the Lord. Third, prove your faith to the Lord the leader continues the reading. At a crack, all the shinobi in the room stood in a combat pose. The first person to notice was Naruto, after focusing his hearing due to the torches, he was able to immediately notice what was happening. The door the door is closing he shouted. At his words, the entire group turned towards the door, only to see it close with a slam. Curse I am going out of here he shouts. I'll go now. You guys take care of everything. Glaring rebelliously at the leader, the man turned to the door and grabbed the handles, Naruto's eyes widening. No, stop he shouts desperately. Chapter 5, a sickening sound of something hitting something else echoed throughout the temple. With that, the shinobi's head had disappeared. Having lost his head, his body naturally fell back to the ground. The fallen shinobi's friends began to scream. Having smashed the ninja's head with his mallet, the statue returned and assumed its position next to the door, as if nothing had happened. That? Does that mean all the statues here can move? A ninja questions upset. I didn't even see him swing that mace shouted the leader. It was at that point that Naruto repeated the healer's words in his mind. If that's true he murmurs with fear. He shuddered. Making an effort to move his terrified body, he turned and looked at the statue of God and found it looking directly at him. Ah, Naruto gasps terrified. This was just beginning, the eyes of the great statue were illuminated with a crimson light. Was it his shinobi instinct? No, they were the survival instincts of a living being. Something's coming, he whispers. Something that couldn't be stopped by anyone in this room. Naruto turned and screamed at the top of his lungs. Damn, just as he opened his mouth the blonde, a beam of crimson light shot from the statue's eyes. Naruto threw himself at the healer and knocked her to the ground. The beam of light passed through where Naruto was standing moments before one-tenth of a second. No, one-hundredth of a second, if the time of his actions had been just one infinitesimal slower. Unfortunately one shinobi was slow and was erased without leaving a trace of life. He had never witnessed a devastating attack. All the survivors gulped and looked at Naruto. Naruto checked that the statue stopped attacking, but its eyes continued to glow crimson. The Yuzumaki looked back at the ground, the healer was in shock, completely terrified. Thinking about helping her, the blonde began to get up when a strong hand forced him down. Don't stand up, the leader orders. Everyone stay where you are don't move from your position. He looked where there should have been a corpse, there was only a large trench of destroyed soil. Did you yell at us after you discovered something? The man questioned seriously. I just felt like something dangerous was coming, that's all, Naruto says. The man smiles at him, his instincts were sharper, that's good. His gaze turned to sadness, as Naruto looks at the man for a moment. Leader your arm he speaks uncomfortably. It's okay, I can handle it. Help me stop the bleeding with a bandage the man asks. When Naruto nodded and completed first aid, the man let out a long sigh. 
It was a sigh full of experience of a shinobi life. The leader looks around him, observing the surroundings and the state of his situation. Just because the statue of God stopped his attack did not mean that his adversity was over. Time passed as the shinobi lay on the ground. This wasn't supposed to happen why? As soon a ninja mutters in panic. We can't stay here shouts another. The shinobis that remained were only six. Everyone was in panic because they never prepared for this. This situation was on another level, even they as Jounin didn't know how to react. The healer and the surviving Suna ninjas cried relentlessly. The patience of the survivors was slowly reaching its limit. Naruto felt the same way. But what could they do? If the leader's guess was correct, they would be attacked the moment they started moving, and even if they managed to dodge the god statue's attack, they still had to pass through the statues guarding the gate. And therein lay the problem. The movement of the one guarding the door was so fast that it could barely be seen with the naked eye. How could they go through something like that? It was an impossible situation. The annihilation of all shinobi was only a matter of time, just as the thought arose in the Yuzumaki's head, an uncomfortable thought followed it. Something no one else had noticed. Maybe the answer was there. It was at that moment. Do not move, the Yuzumaki shouted at the shinobis, who responded by baring his teeth. Be quiet we don't know when that thing will attack again, you just want us to wait until then a ninja replies furiously. As beings who dedicated themselves to risking their bodies in combat, a shinobi possessed physical abilities far greater than those of an ordinary person. On top of that, the ninja who shouted earlier was someone whose abilities were recognized by his village and who was placed in the bingo book by his enemies. Naruto tried to remember his name, it was Hamada Atsushi. With his body still supporting the ground, Hamada flexed the muscles in his legs. The goal is the door. With an explosive start, Atsushi ran towards the door. Watching the man's attempt, Naruto turned and looked in the direction of the god statue. As he expected, the statue looked at the Suna ninja. A ray of light shot out of his eyes. The healer unable to control her fear, a yellow puddle appeared at the place where she had collapsed. The ninja's faces hardened. No trace was left where the Hamada was standing. Plus two feet on the ground, which ended just above his ankles. The sound of a man vomiting reached Naruto's ears, and he frowned. As expected, this thing was more than capable of annihilating all the survivors in an instant. For that, it was easier than crushing an insect. He could kill them all, but he didn't. Compared to the ninja enemies that always lunged at the shinobi, these things were different. He would pulverize them if they got up. They attack someone only when they approach the door. There were patterns and conditions for his aggressiveness. Like a game with rules. Maybe are there rules in this room? The blonde mutters to himself. At that moment, Naruto found a piece to the puzzle in his head. It was the chart that the leader was reading earlier. The commandments of the Temple of Kartanen. The commandment was a rule, and rules must be followed. If there was a way out of this place, away from these things, the answer was written inside the table. Worship the Lord Naruto pronounced the first commandment out loud. Hmm? Did you just say something? The leader asked, addressing Naruto. Instead of answering, the Yuzumaki put a finger to his lips. Slowly, the blonde stood up. The Suna leader frantically tried to stop him, but Naruto shook his head with a determined face. Without taking his eyes off the statue of God, he slowly rose with his body higher and higher. Suddenly, the statue of God's gaze fell on him. If he hesitated for even a fraction of a second, Naruto would have lost more than a few strands of hair. Back on the ground, the Kanoha shinobi gasped loudly, terrified. He had almost died just now. When his eyes met the statue of God, he knew that he had seen death directly in his eyes. But it wasn't in vain. Having his body resting on the ground, no movement would cause a reaction from the god statue. To confirm it, he had to put his life at risk. And now, he had confirmation. The meaning of the first commandment, worship the lord, all they have to bow before the statue of god Naruto shouts. The remaining shinobi tilted their heads in confusion. Lean to that thing. Says a ninja from Suna. The shinobis who were looking at each other began to curse Naruto. Fuck but what the hell are you saying? Is this a situation where you should say something like that? Have you gone crazy, Yuzumaki Naruto? After all, two of his companions had perished in front of the statue of God. To think that he would ask others to bow down to that thing, it was understandable that they would get angry. There was no solid evidence to his conjectures. Just a feeling. One could not only express in words what one felt instinctively. I'll do it, the voice came from behind Naruto. The Yuzumaki's eyes turned in the direction of the raid leader he had spoken to. Leader, the blonde murmurs. Are you going to bow down to that damn statue? As the survivors grumbled in confusion, the man in charge turned and met Naruto's blue eyes. What have you discovered? Naruto shook his head. Just a feeling. Yes, for now, he answers. I see. The Kanoha shinobi's instincts resulted in seven survivors, six after the Hamada's death. As such, wasn't it worth putting a little faith in him? This was what the captain believed. The moment the raid leader bowed before the god statue, there was a tension in the air. Will you really do it? 
a ninja asks indignantly. Taking advantage of the opportunity the leader gave him, Naruto spoke. Please bow before the statue of God. This may be the only chance to get out of here alive. Alive? To get out alive. That phrase reached the ears of the others with great weight. One by one, the hesitant ninjas began to bow before the god statue, mimicking a scene of reverence. Eventually, even the most furious ninja took his place and bowed before the statue. However, there was no response from the statue of God. His eyes were still illuminated with a terrible crimson light. Uzumaki felt his heart sink into his stomach. His gaze turned to the only woman in the room. She was lying completely flat on the ground with her hands covering her head, it was difficult to tell if she was in a position of reverence before the statue. Naruto gently grabbed the healer's wrists. Surprised, she watched him like a frightened prey. He nodded silently and then released her hand. Slowly, Naruto helped the healer assume her reverent position before the god statue. And then one was missing. The same. Naruto looked at the statue, knelt down and then put his hands on the ground and slowly lowered his head. And something happened. The shinobis who noticed began to make noise. The statue of God. Everyone, look at the statue of God. His eyes, the crimson light emanating from the statue's eyes was fading. That? You mean it's really working? And just like that, the light completely faded from the eyes of the god statue. The shinobis shouted in unison. The light disappeared. We are alive. The excited survivors stood up from their places and applauded, but the statue of God did not react. Naruto, who followed his example, sighed in relief. As he had assumed. This room was operating according to a set of rules and conditions, just like a game. However, the game was not over yet. There were still two other commandments. Second. Praise the Lord. Third. Test your faith. Suddenly, with a sudden boom, the entire room began to shake. Naruto's expression tensed. The blonde's guesses were correct. This wasn't over yet. The huge body of the god statue slowly rose from his throne. The ninjas who were celebrating together with tears of joy, froze in fear. That? Isn't it over yet? No, it can't be possible. Frozen with fear, the survivors could not say much more. Their faces were filled with terror and despair. No, no. The statue of God assumed a standing position. He looked around, taking in his surroundings, and then started walking in the direction of the humans. With every step he took, the statue of God made the earth shake. His massive figure was such that his head almost reached the ceiling. As his sheer size put pressure on the humans, he slowly filled the space between him and them. Hey Uzumaki Uzumaki, what should we do? The shinobi who were cursing Naruto just moments before, were now looking at him with hope in their eyes. Is there something we should do? Say something. Even as adults, the ninja's faces were on the verge of breaking into tears. However, they looked to the Uzumaki as their only remaining hope. Naruto carefully helped the healer, who was frozen in fear, as she stood up, he said the second commandment. It said, praise the lord, that's our clue. Ah, that, it was written on that table, right? Says the leader. That's right, praise the lord, test your faith, we must comply with the three commandments Naruto states, his words were full of urgency. With one last step, the god statue had already arrived in front of the group. A gigantic shadow covered the humans, whose faces turned pale. I, I'll try, a ninja speaks tremblingly. One of the shinobi, normally a young man, stepped forward. Hey what are you going to try? Asks the leader. My mother is part of the choir of our religion, she taught me this. If it is to praise, she trusted it he responds with little renewed confidence and walked in the direction of the statue of God. As he approached the statue, he took a deep breath and began to sing. As I walked towards the Lord his youthful voice echoed throughout the room. Please renew me and give me your wisdom the statue of God stopped before him. The ninjas were left stunned. As if he was satisfied with the song, the statue of God remained motionless. All other sounds in the room disappeared, only the youthful voice was heard in the room. Gaining courage from the apparent result, the man from Suna strengthened his voice and continued singing. All my weaknesses will be eliminated by the grace of the Lord. In the midst of the hopeful humans, Naruto couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The feeling that something was missing. No this is all wrong. He repeated the thought to himself. This room had its own rules. Right now, the young hunter was following the rules of the shinobi god, the sage of the six paths. But fortunately, the statue of god remained motionless. Maybe this was enough to satisfy his conditions. Uzumaki tilted his head. The reason why he didn't stop the chanting was because he couldn't think of any other way to stop the statue of god. Suddenly a loud roar broke the chant, followed by a scream. Ay ay ay. When the statue of god raised his foot again, the singing hunter's shattered limbs fell from his soul. The others started shouting too. The face of the god statue that was previously emotionless was now filled with incredible rage. These he's angry one murmurs. Our run shouts. The survivors quickly ran away from the statue. Having lost all thought and reason after seeing the youthful shinobi being torn apart under the foot of the god statue, a ninja stood up and shouted. 
Naruto, who was running with a healer in her arms, quickly turned around and tried to help her. But he was blocked by the leader. Captain? Ask. It's too late shouts. Like swatting a fly, the statue of God slammed his hand on a ninja. Naruto turned around. It was a horrible scene that he could not bear. We can't waste time here are you trying to get that young woman killed too? The man scolded. Naruto turned his attention again. The shinobi was right. With each step, the entire temple shook. Wanting to crush the ninjas. Naruto ran with gritted teeth. With her eyes closed, the healer held on to the Yuzumaki as they ran. Let separate orders the Suna shinobi. Alright the blonde shouts in agreement. Knowing that running together made them an easier target, Yuzumaki and the leader separated, trying to keep as much distance between him and the statue of God. Naruto ran to a spot on the walls. He saw a ninja already there, having run with all his might, knowing that there was more at risk for him than just his life. The image of his family was reflected in his eyes. He had to go back for Hikari. Chapter 6. One of the ninjas was a friend of the leader, he got too close to a statue that had a weapon, luckily he managed to get away in time with a Kawarimi no Jutsu. What he broke for was a log. Daichi shouts the leader. I'm fine shouts back. The statue, which had tried to cut Daichi in two with his sword, simply returned and assumed its position on the walls, as if nothing had happened. The captain held back his tears, relieved to see that his friend survived. A ninja who got too close to a statue could not escape in time, and the statue managed to reach a limb. My arm my arm I scream horrified. The interior of the temple had become a scene of terror and carnage. Naruto panted wildly as he ran, his forehead dripping with cold sweat. His legs felt increasingly heavy, his breath was becoming more and more irregular. But his head was filled with only one thought, which was repeated over and over again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The second commandment that ran through his head. The key to solving the meaning of the commandments must be hidden in this room. Something had to help, something. But when the shinobi entered the temple, they found neither tools nor mechanisms. The only thing here are the statues. One moment. A thought arose in Naruto's head. Are those statues the only thing here? The Yuzumaki's eyes widened. Why didn't I think of that? He exclaims. If the statues were the only things in this room. So the statues must be the key to solving this mystery. The statues only move when someone comes into range, this must be the key to using them in some way. Gathering what energy he had left. Everyone, head to the statues with instruments he orders with a hoarse cry. Naruto's scream reached the ears of all the survivors. Instruments? Asks the leader. Hope returned to his eyes. Unlike the time when Naruto asked them to bow, this time they did not hesitate to respond. Of course, if Yuzumaki was wrong in his assumption, they would be massacred when they approached the statues. But right now, there wasn't a single shinobi who distrusted Naruto's orders. The leader was the first to reach a statue with an instrument. Holding his breath, the captain slowly looked up at the statue. As if in response, the statue's fingers began to move, and he began to play the harp in his hands. It was a beautiful sound. He was right he states. Go to the statues with instruments. Each shinobi, with renewed hope, ran towards the various statues holding an instrument. Trumpets, flutes, lyres. Soon, the harmonious melody of different instruments filled the entire temple. Aichi, who had been running until he was out of breath, collapsed and knelt in front of a statue holding a mandolin. As the mandolin melody rang through the air, the god statue that was chasing Mr. Kim slowly stopped. Unable to contain his emotions, the man burst into tears as he knelt down. And the statue of God departed from him. Scanning the rest of the temple, he found a new target. Should he swore out loud. Meeting his gaze, Naruto cursed his luck once again. And he started running, his heart beating like he was about to explode. His jacket was soaked. Because why isn't he playing? Naruto wonders in panic and looked at the statue that had arrived with resentment. Holding the drums in his hand, the silent figure did not show a single hint that he would play his instrument. With terrifying speed, the god statue closed the distance between them. As the statue, which had been at the opposite end of the room only a few seconds ago, approached them, Naruto gulped. Is it because the healer and I are here at the same time? He questions himself. That had to be the answer. Because looking around, no other person had a problem with the statue of him. Having time to think about this, he left the woman and prepared to run to a different place. Naruto a terrified healer clung to his sleeves. If I stay, we'll both die, Naruto calmly whispered into his ears. When he saw tears forming in the corners of his eyes, Naruto knew there was no time to explain. He gently removed his hands from her sleeves, then ran with all his might towards another statue. He heard the sound of the drum starting behind him as he ran. There was only one thing left. Safely reached the other statue. Naruto was the only one who had not managed to reach the protection of the statues with instruments. Consequently, the complete wrath of the statue of God was now focused solely on him. Yuzumaki ran from the footsteps of his pursuer and crossed the room. As he barely dodged and moved away from the statue's stomps, his gasps became increasingly ragged. 
He was a shinobi, so his body offered what little help he needed at the moment. Just a little more. Noticing the footsteps of the god statue approaching him, he focused on strengthening his legs with chakra. His speed increased. It was only a few more steps until we reached the statue. No, it's not that way they yelled at him. Having focused on the god statue's movements thus far, Naruto directed his attention to the statue he had reached. He's not holding an instrument. He now realized that what appeared to be an instrument in the statue's hands was actually a shield. Mercilessly, the statue raised and lowered the shield in his hands. Yuzumaki dove to the side. Ah shouted the healer. As she rolled on the ground, she looked up. The statue of God was almost on top of him. I'm going from bad to worse she murmurs. Her fall had resulted in a cut on her forehead. Blood flowed into his eyes, obscuring his vision. Naruto quickly looked to the left and right of him. Instrument, instrument. But no instrument came within his sight. The statue of God lifted his foot. Shitty gasped scared. Naruto barely evaded the stomp by throwing his body to the side. But he was reaching his limit. Feeling dizzy, he found it difficult to keep his balance for some reason. If there was a god, he wanted to pray to him. At that moment, Naruto saw a statue that he was holding neither a weapon nor an instrument. That is, crawling with the last vestiges of his strength, pinning his hopes on that statue. With a final twist of her body and the summoning of a shadow clone, she launched herself at the feet of the statue, holding some books in her hands. In front of the statue of God. As if she was made worse by his persistent resistance, the anger on the face that despised Naruto brightened greatly. He stopped in front of the blonde. Facing a giant as tall as a building, Yuzumaki struggled to breathe. I guess I'm a cornered rat, he thinks pessimistically. The god statue simply continued to stare. Certain of his imminent death, Naruto saw his death in the eyes that looked at him. At that moment, he heard a beautiful and melodious singing coming from behind him. With effort, he turned and looked at the source of the singing. The statue on which he rested now sang with a sacred voice, its sound echoed throughout the temple. Looking back, the shinobi saw the god statue's face begin to relax. The traces of his demonic fury disappeared as the statue's face returned to its original, emotionless visage. When the music of the statues ended, the statue of God turned and returned to his throne, as if nothing had happened. The sound of the giant sitting down echoed throughout the temple. Ah, are we safe? Naruto smiled slightly through his heavy breathing. Naruto the healer quickly runs to him. Having reached him after running with all her might, she collapsed next to him crying. Oh my god oh my god she murmurs. He used all the chakra at his disposal and tried every healing jutsu he knew of. But it had no effect. One by one, the shinobi gathered in front of the Uzumaki. His expressions were terrified. Amid the looks and words of pity, the healer cried incessantly, why are they looking at me like that? Naruto wanted to ask, but he lacked the energy to speak. Then, he tried to gather the strength to get up. A pool of blood had collected where he was sitting. The blonde was finally able to understand the situation he was in. His right leg had disappeared under his knee. He looked across the room at the statue holding a shield. The base of the shield was stained with blood. His missing leg was under her. He turned and saw blood dripping from the woman's nose. Her body had reached its limit. A shinobi's healing jutsu was insufficient to regenerate a part of his body. However, he continued, his efforts were like collecting water with a broken jug. And as he continued, both her chakra and his vitality decreased rapidly. Alright. You can stop now. No I can cure this I'm going to cure you denies firmly. The shinobi looked at the couple with pity. Of the nine who had entered, only six remained. Of the remaining six, three have serious injuries. The leader and his partner, his arms, and now Naruto and his leg. Although their lives were saved. No one could put on a single smile. Suddenly, a thunderous sound echoed throughout the temple. At its center, the ground with a magic circle inscribed on it began to rise, forming a platform. Uzumaki realized that the final test had arrived. Test your faith. He had already been contemplating its meaning. The high ground stopped at his waist. An altar the blonde spoke to himself. An altar? Did he just say altar? The man who had saved their lives not once, but twice, Naruto was not a relevant shinobi, but a humble and common shinobi. If it weren't for Yuzumaki, we would be. The thoughts of the survivors were united. Naruto's words so far were a lifesaver for them. And now this man had spoken the words, altar. I think I understand, Daichi said. He unsheathed the katana from his waist. Normally it was a weapon to be used against enemies, its purpose this time was different. Even an idiot like me can understand what you mean by altar. The ninjas looked at the man's drawn sword, shining sharply, and gulped. Hey, Daichi why are you bringing that up now? Asks a colleague. Let's talk about this, let's talk the captain was the highest ranking of the group. The Daichi pointed his sword in the direction of the altar. The last commandment was, test your faith, and now an altar appeared in the middle of the room Daichi's gaze turned to Naruto. We have to sacrifice someone on the altar, don't we Yuzumaki? The blonde nodded. That was his assumption too. One of the six should become a sacrifice. 
That's probably the last drill. As he raised his head, he saw the man approaching him with a strange look in his eyes. A line of sweat fell down the side of his face. What are you going to? He questions nervously. Just sit there calmly. Aichi pointed his katana at the ninja who had lost his arm, who had been sitting next to Naruto, checking his wounds. Because I... He asks terrified. What use will you be to us? He questions seriously. I what about you Zamaki? He proposes. He doesn't have a leg, he will slow us down. He saved our lives says Daichi. The man looks for a moment at his savior, the blood loss stopped. But he was still dead weight, although he didn't help much either. He bit his bottom lip, he couldn't do that to the man who sacrificed his leg to build the whole puzzle. With force of will and fear he stood up, the blonde tried to grab his arm, but he couldn't. He walked to the altar and looked at the recordings in another language, an orange flame lit up behind him. That? I asked the heir. Naruto looked at that flame for a moment, Daichi approached to kill his partner. Upon entering the circle another flame appeared. When Daichi was going to sacrifice the shinobi. Daichi stopped Naruto orders. The leader's eyes begged the blonde to stay quiet. Naruto wanted to say something, but he swallowed his words. Wait, there's a way so no one dies, he tried. Daichi, who was about to impale his partner, stopped. He looked at the altar and the flames, deciding to make a risky decision. Someone, help me get to the altar, he asked. The leader and another ninja reached out to hold him. They entered the circle of the altar, three flames appeared. They sat him with his back to the altar, longing to feel the leg he didn't have, he looked at the others outside the circle. I think everyone should come in. Placing their trust in the blonde, they entered the circle. From the outer circle of the central area, small blue flames began to appear. One by one, they lit up and formed a circle around the middle area. Naruto counted 36 blue flames. The red flames match the number of people. Is there any meaning to that number? At that moment, the door blocking his exit opened without warning, if one paid attention a small blue portal was hidden in the darkness of the hallway. Each and every one of them wanted to run for the exit, but the memory of the singing shinobi's final moments remained fresh in their minds, and no one made a move. They did not know what fate would await the first person to leave the altar. As if waiting for an answer, all their gazes fell on Yuzumaki, who closed his mouth, it was too early to come to a conclusion. They couldn't tell whether or not the opening of the door was a trap, or if it was the room's way of letting them know that they had fulfilled the final commandment. All the ninjas waited for the blonde's instructions, the noises of bad news came from the edges of the room. The six heads turned in unison, looking around the room. What the hell? They have gotten closer, everyone just moved, the survivors' breathing quickened. The statues that only responded to humans who were nearby suddenly seemed to be a few steps closer than before. In that short time, Naruto was able to completely determine the situation. The sliding sound from before was the sound of stone pedestals colliding with the ground. Have they stopped moving? Daichi wiped the sweat from his eyebrows. While the others' attentions were focused on the statues, Naruto looked at the blue flames that surrounded them. Disappearing one by one, three blue flames had already been extinguished. That where did that come from? Someone shouted. Naruto raised his head, the sound coming from his direction. The statues facing him had gotten closer. Why only me? Was it because he had looked away? It is questioned. The blonde closed his eyes to test the theory. Am, why? What do we do now? With renewed understanding, Yuzumaki shouted to the others. Don't take your eyes off the statues. Now that he thought about it, the initial movements of the pedestals were probably caused when everyone looked towards him for guidance earlier. These bastards don't move when we're looking at them, Naruto thinks uncomfortably. Another blue flame went out, but it did not provoke a response from the statues. Could that be? Without taking his eyes off the statues, Yuzumaki carefully raised his arm and looked at the clock. The blue flames were disappearing every minute. The blue flames are a timer. The blonde shinobi assumed that the test of the final commandment was to wait on top of the altar until the 36 blue flames disappeared. As long as each of them observed all the statues, they would be safe. There was a chance that no one would have to die in this final judgment. Naruto looked at his watch and the blue flames to determine the remaining time. They only had to wait 30 minutes, but Yuzumaki had made a mistake. While counting the blue flames, he had looked away from the statues, and as such, they began to move towards him again. I cannot do this the man who was placed in front of Naruto shouted and ran towards the open door. Surprised by the sound of movement coming from behind him, unable to turn around, the man lost all courage and made the decision to flee. As he jumped off the altar, one of the red flames disappeared. No Naruto shouted. But the man who ran with all his might ignored him and passed through the open doors. That. Yuzumaki, what just happened? He got out safely. Naruto, unable to look at the door, didn't know what had happened. Did something just change? He asked stunned. The door the door closed slightly the healer answers. Is it closing now? She questions again. No, no. It started to close a little after the man passed by, but he's not moving anymore she answers again. 
Naruto remembered that the red flame had disappeared after the man left the altar. Of course his heart sank into his stomach. The enigma that was going through his mind about the altar had finally been revealed. But part of this was demonstrating faith to the Lord. The answer had come to him. However, for a man who could only walk with the help of another person, it was the worst possible response. The open door was a trap. A false hope in his eyes if the entire group had run towards the exit after seeing the open door, the door would have closed immediately, and the group would have run straight towards their slaughter. On the contrary, the altar was the safe zone. If they just stayed at the top and waited for the blue flames to die down while watching the statues, they would have ensured their safety. A false hope they could see versus a promise they couldn't see. This is how one proves his faith to the Lord. It is a test to overcome the temptation of freedom in the midst of approaching danger. Here, two variables appeared in his situation. 1. Naruto's presence. Instead of running towards the open door to his fate, the group stopped to listen to the blonde, avoiding certain death. We were lucky, he allowed himself to think. It was only possible due to the presence of a man who had solved the two commandments before and saved their lives, earning their respect and attention in the process. But the second variable was not so favorable. Someone had left the test safely. How would those left behind react to this semblance of hope? The answer was obvious. The man who helped Naruto earlier was the second to run out of the open doors. Another red flame went out with the second corridor, and the door closed a little more. Hey, hey Daichi moved his finger towards the second corridor, but the man, like the first, passed through the doors. Looking at the number of remaining flames, Naruto shouted. Please don't move we can't afford to lose anyone else. Forehead. Back. Left. Right. The cover the four cardinal directions, a minimum of four people were needed. Naruto, the healer, the captain and Daichi. If there is still one more person among the remaining four, a gap will open in your coverage. Yuzumaki, what is happening? Please explain Daichi asked as he wiped the sweat from his forehead. We just have to wait like this until all the blue flames disappear and Naruto revealed everything he had assumed. Daichi listened carefully and nodded. Finishing his explanation, Naruto added. We can all survive this. The rules of this room always opened a path of survival for those who followed it. The last rule should be no different. As long as they believed in each other, everyone could leave without being hurt. This was the blonde's conclusion. However, Daichi's thoughts were different. Uzumaki you may be right about all this, but isn't there a chance that the door will close once the timer ends? He, he asked after hesitation. Naruto couldn't answer him. Even though his theory was gleaned from multiple trials and evidence observed so far, he was not 100% guaranteed that he was correct. And Daichi needed a guarantee. For him, the certainty of his own survival outweighed the uncertain survival of the entire group. I'm sorry I don't think I can do this, he apologized embarrassedly. Daichi, I'm sorry. And with that, the man of Suna left the altar. Ignoring the blonde's voice, he ran towards the door. After taking one last look at the people he left behind, Daichi walked through the door and did not return. Naruto clenched and gritted his teeth. Shit, he curses. He had saved their lives. Instead of repaying his actions with kindness and gratitude, they betrayed him. As expected, a hole appeared in his covering of the statues. The statues were getting closer and closer towards the group. After looking around, the leader spoke to Naruto and his fellow healer. You should go, he says with a voice full of resignation. Naruto turned his head and looked at the man. Captain. If anyone should live, it is you young people who still have many years to live the leader smiled. They were words meant to comfort the two who would have to leave him behind. Yuzumaki nodded in defeat. His heart was heavy, but they were not in a situation where they could argue about who should stay and who should go. Kira, could you take Naruto? Why yeah but suddenly, Kira, who was approaching the two men, collapsed to the ground. Ah. Struggling to get up, tears filled her eyes. I I can't move my legs Naruto and the captain's expressions darkened. She was not in good condition. Her lips had turned blue and her entire body was stiff. It was the side effect of using too much chakra until it was almost empty, making her exhaustion worse. Only because she tried to heal my leg, the blonde struggled to speak as guilt weighed on his heart. But this was not a time to be wasted like this. The statues continued to move towards the center of the room. Go away, he says with a somber voice. You the leader's eyes widened. Please captain, go out with Kira, he says determinedly. I told you, I'll stay, he replies. So who's going to take Kira? The blonde couldn't walk because of him. It was impossible for him to get Kira, also incapacitated, to the door. Of course there was the option of leaving her behind. But she was someone who had saved many lives countless times. And even her current state spent all of her chakra in the efforts to heal him. There is no time. Please go the blonde smiled falsely. Your name? Nakama Refuto the man picked up Kira with a heavy expression. No we can't Naruto, you can go, I'll stay behind the healer cried and shook her head in disagreement. Yuzumaki nodded at the man who hit the back of the healer's head, knocking her unconscious. Nakamura carried her over her right shoulder. 
It's my decision, after all. Gudo bowed his head to Naruto out of respect and walked down the altar with Kira. The statues were quickly approaching the altar. Sitting up, Naruto took a deep breath. Clenching his fist, Naruto looks to the side. Running away, Daichi threw his precious katana to the ground. The blonde grabs her, when he returned to her position, the statues were already reaching where she was. Let's see, if I am not mistaken the compensation for the death of a shinobi during a raid was 2150000 yen for the family. Or was it 50,000 yen? He mutters to himself. The first statue to arrive took a step towards the altar. Naruto looked up at him and raised his sword. Come. But the first attack came from behind. The spear that pierced his back now protruded from his chest. Off Naruto vomited a large amount of blood. Pain assaulted his senses like hail. If the place where you were stabbed was a little higher, it would have pierced your heart, the words of his best friend from before him passed through his mind. The statue raised his spear and with it, the blonde. Still skewered by the weapon, Yuzumaki found himself suspended in the air. As he flailed his legs in pain, the statue slammed him into the ground. He heard the sound of bones breaking all over his body. There wasn't a single part where he didn't feel pain. One by one, the statues gathered around the convulsed Naruto, who looked at them. No I don't want to die like this, he gasps. As death came closer and closer, tears formed in his eyes. His family appeared in his mind. Hikari, someone who depended on him, his grandfather and his friends. I don't want to die, he denies. Ending his life at a young age of 24. A statue wielding a sword walked towards him with an expressionless face. Even though his entire body was trembling, Naruto didn't take his eyes off the statue. Finally, the statue's raised sword fell towards him. Just one more, if I had one more chance gasps for air. The Yuzumaki's eyes widened at the fall of the sword. It was at that moment. As if someone had pressed the pause button on a video, the falling sword stopped before his eyes. No, he didn't stop. He slowed down, almost as if he had stopped. Millimeter by millimeter, the sword was definitely still falling towards him. W what? He couldn't hide his surprise. Then, a female voice that he had never heard in his life rang throughout his head. Seek request. Have all conditions been met? He had no idea what he was saying. No, before that, where does that voice come from? Murmuring his thoughts, the voice continued. You have obtained the right to become a player. Do you accept? Yes or no? It seems like he's giving me something. Growing up in a ninja system, he knew there was no such thing as a free thing in life. But I guess that was in life. What does that matter in death? As he waited in hesitation, the voice in his head asked again. You have obtained the right to become a player. Do you accept? Yes or no? Chapter 7. Tsuritobi was nervous, it had been more than seven days since his grandson, Naruto, disappeared. There was still no news from the mission team or the target. He was worried about Hikari, she still doesn't know that they have lost contact with her brother. So she had requested a tracking team. Hokage, warns the leader of the raid. Okay, I'll say it quickly. One of our shinobi went on a mission with Suna ninjas, we lost contact approximately seven days ago. Kakashi, you will handle the mission he orders. Understood. Letting out a sigh, he lights his pipe. The people who had arrived immediately left and looked out the window for a few seconds. Looking back at his desk, she cried comically as he watched his feared enemy grow. Why did you have to die at 35 years old, Minato? He asks into the air. Outside the Hokage Tower the cry of a lost soul echoes. The tracking team, consisting of an Inuzuka, a Hayuga, and Kakashi, gathered at the door. They took off immediately, as a companion could be in danger. The last time we saw it was in Tanugakur, the one-eyed man speaks. Who is the lost one? Asks the Inuzuka. Yuzumaki Naruto, Kakashi replies coldly. They move silently among the trees. Days later they arrive at the edge of Tanugakur, the place seemed gloomy, as if a presence of a dangerous hunter was roaming the area. But their heads settled, the shinobi spread out to cover more ground. They began to question the civilians, who denied having seen the Yuzumaki. They met 20 minutes later, taking advantage of the Inuzuka's great sense of smell he captured Naruto's scent. They walked through the forest and found him passed out, leaning against a tree. His clothes were torn in critical places. They panicked slightly looking for injuries, incredibly everything was in order. They picked him up to move him to Konoha, they took intervals and tried to wake him up, nothing worked, disturbing the shinobi's nerves. Upon reaching the village they immediately went to the hospital, the doctors immediately treated him. He was not in danger from any poison or toxin. Kakashi went to the Hokage's office. Kakashi Naruto is dead he says with a broken voice. That? He asks, stunned. A message just arrived from Suna, they explained everything, Naruto died, the old man says coldly. Hokage, we have found Naruto, he is unharmed, he says quickly. It's impossible, his leg. He asks, upset. He's fine, he seemed exhausted from lack of chakra and a big shock he reports. That boy and his devilish luck, hears and murmurs in relief. 
Chapter 8 Naruto stands up abruptly, the last memories of him flooding his head. He moves his head in all directions, he was no longer in that room, there were no giant statues, no altars, no pain. He looks out the window and confirms that he was in Konoha, going to bed again. She hears the door open, the silhouette of her beloved grandfather the Hokage, Saratobi Hiruzen, enters the room. You've regained consciousness, I'm glad, she smiles. What happened? They found you passed out from shock and chakra exhaustion in the forest, near Tanigakur. Naruto proceeds to tell the mission, as he feared Hiruzen did not know how he got out of the place. Saratobi silently left the room. The Yuzumaki looks up slightly. Before his eyes, the words floated in midair. You have unread messages. He closed his eyes and opened them again. You have unread messages. The floating letters did not disappear. He shook his head and rubbed his eyes, but the words still remained. Naruto tried to touch the blue screen, but he passed through them as if there was nothing. Grabbing his head he tries to remember what happened after that pop-up screen appeared. He had accepted, it was an opportunity to see his sister once again. When he accepted, from the ceiling a blue circle began to swallow the statues. When he reached the Yuzumaki's wounded body and the last thing he felt was green grass. The door is opened abruptly and a red head peeks out. Seeing that his brother was unharmed, Hikari threw herself onto the older man's chest to hug him. Moron do you know how worried she was she, she exclaims furiously. Sorry, something unexpected happened, the blonde murmurs an apology. Certainly whatever he had accepted, the blonde had no regrets. He had a chance to be with her sister, he wouldn't throw it away. He would become strong so he could live and protect his family. The Yuzumaki calming down, separates herself from her brother and sits in a chair. Her relief filled her body, she thought that from now on she had to live alone, but her brother was strong and was here with her. The Kari, hypothetically speaking, if you saw something that had received a message and you couldn't open it, what would you do? She, she questions with interest. You hit your head on the mission, she sighs and places a thoughtful hand on her chin. Well open the mailbox. Open the mailbox. She murmurs doubtfully. But the soft ting, the screen changes. Smiling at how ironic and simple it was, at least he already knew the interface. The presence of his sister helped him realize that no one, apart from him, could see that screen. You have two unread messages. Dot. Welcome to becoming a player. Unread. Daily mission. Preparation to become powerful has arrived. Unread. The Kari, who had left during class time, had to return to the academy. Naruto says goodbye to her with a soft smile, looking back at the screen, frozen in place of her. Open first message she says quietly. This system will help with the growth of the player. Failure to follow the instructions of this system may result in a penalty. Their reward has been received. Naruto saw the parade of strange words, they didn't know in what context they were applied. When the answer came to him, if the room of the statue of God was a game with rules, this must be similar. Open the second one, he orders. Daily mission. Preparation to become powerful has arrived. Unread. Daily mission. Preparation to become powerful. Do 100 push-ups. Incomplete 0 100. Do 100 sit-ups. Incomplete 0 100. Do 100 squats. Incomplete 0 100. Run 10 kilometers. Incomplete 0 10. Notice, failing the daily mission will lead to a penalty mission. Despite saying become powerful they were simple physical exercises. He just woke up from a mission, deserved a rest and was in a hospital. She thinks lazily Naruto, laying down so she can sleep. He would later take care of that notice. The hours passed and the small clock that was below the warning words turned red until it reached 12. Naruto blinked at the intense light in front of his eyes. Penalty mission. You have not been able to complete the daily mission. You will be moved to the penalty zone for a certain time. Naruto opened his eyes and sat up on the bed. The floor seemed to rumble and the bed disappeared, his stomach twisted less than when the traitor took them to that place. He fell face first into the ground, standing up, Naruto felt the sand in his hands, looking around he realized that he was no longer in the village. He found himself in the middle of a vast desert. He brushed the sand off his body, stood up and looked around him. In every direction, he saw an endless field of sand stretching to the horizon. A desert? He asks into the air. Where I am? Panicking, Naruto tried to understand the situation, suddenly, he heard the sound of sand sliding. The sand on the ground next to him was sinking into the ground. Using all of his strength, Naruto fought to not be sucked into the whirlpool. As the sunken area widened, Yuzumaki was barely escaping the sinkhole with both of his hands. As he sat panting, he looked down at the newly created depression in the ground. The sand at the lowest point of the hole was boiling strangely. Naruto shuddered as he realized that a single wrong step would have caused him to fall into that hole. Looking closer, he noticed something large wriggling beneath the sand at the bottom of the depression. Confirming his suspicions, a column of sand shot out from the hole as he walked backwards. Sounding like a waterfall, the sand fell around him, revealing what had appeared from the hole. Naruto's eyes widened. A giant centipede had risen from the sand. 
The fully revealed form of the monster was taller than a five-story building. Yuzumaki gulped. That was an incredibly large existence. He had never heard of a centipede this size. But it wasn't just the size of the centipede that surprised Naruto. Am I dreaming? Why why is there a name floating above that thing's head? Giant sand centipede with poison fangs. Naruto could certainly beat him, as he had his chakra and ninja skills. As he prepared himself unconscious, he tried to open his ninja bag to grab a kunai. The problem was that he was wearing a hospital gown, not his ninja clothes. From the corner of his eye he saw the system screen next to him. Penalty mission. Survive goal. Survive for the given time. Time required. 4 hours remaining time. 4 hours 0 min 0 sec. Notice the use of chakra is momentarily blocked. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.